Hello, and welcome back to Let's Play The Elder Scrolls III Morrowind, Game of the Year Edition. In our last video, Fetter did his homework by reading the Guide to Vivek and having a lengthy conversation with Dave Aserano, the gondolier, right over there. Now, before we head in to the Foreign Quarter Canton, I want to show you something. And it's relevant, don't worry. Also, there is a boat over there, in case you wish to travel to or from Vivek by boat. We are now ascending a level and could enter the Foreign Quarter Lower Waste Works if we chose to do so. Operative word lower. Keep that in mind for a minute. And as we turn this corner, we see a canton to the southwest, and a canton directly south, and another over there, coming into view. Let's take a look at the map in the guide to Vivek. From the foreign quarter, and Fetter is standing somewhere about here. We've got the Hlalu compound, the Redoran compound, the Arena, and the Telvani compound. So that is the Hlalu compound, Redoran compound, Arena, and visibility is poor today, so the Telvani compound is out there, but we cannot see it. Well. We kind of can. The far left-hand side of the screen, you can see a uh, sewer outlet. There. <laughs> it's lovely. <laughs> okay. Anyway. Now, looking at Redoran Compound, we see a door right there. That would take you into its waste works. And then directly above is its plaza. The Foreign Quarter Canton is bigger and different. Remember, it said Lower Waste Works. If Fetter ascends a level, he finds the Foreign Quarter Upper Waste Works, not the plaza, as one would expect. Yeah, we're uh, up here with the plazas of the other cantons now. The Foreign Quarter Plaza, however, is all the way up here. We're not going to go in there right now. I just wanted to point that out. The Foreign Quarter Canton is big. So big, they gave it an extra level. Greetings. Hi. I am Good. I'm just heading down. I do still want to start in the lower waste works. So there's the bridge. That's where we started the video. And uh, there's Davos's gondola. Okay, cool. Right, here we are again. Facing south and about to enter the Foreign Quarter Lower Waste Works. Our first look inside. I'm not a fan of the warm lighting, I have to say. I prefer cooler colors actual blue if it's an option. If not, all right, 6,500k white will do. There's a lot to see here. Let's try to explore methodically here. Uh, let's go clockwise. So Fetter is starting at 12 o'clock. Let's look down these rather long corridors. Gotta see everything, after all. 
and we find that this takes you back outside. Ah, fresh air once again. Let's go back in. Yeah, if a canton ever makes you feel claustrophobic, just know that if you look around a little bit, you are very likely to find a nearby exit. Yep, same thing over here. Okay, in we go. So we see a lot of doors, a lot of corridors, and what seems to be an atrium down there. Okay, so if we are going clockwise, here's the first door. Ah, this will take us to the four and quarter upper waste works. Yes, that is another way to get there. We're not going there right now. And I don't want to go downstairs right now. I would like to finish everything on this level of this level. <laughs> so let's uh, let's keep looking around. Where does this go? Ah, the Black Shulk Corner Club. Fetter was instructed to seek out one of his informants here. Hulia, let us enter. Okay. Well, let's talk with you. Go ahead. I'm listening. Get out of our way, Enwa. We got issues with this filthy lizard here. What? His kind aren't welcome here. He belongs in the swamp with the rest of them. That, that, that's a bit xenophobic, don't you think? Ew. Do you have anything else to say about that? Nope. Okay, well, um... That concerns me because Julia is an Argonian. And that might be him. So this could get, uh, this could get tense. Well, anyway, let's try to have a civil conversation right now. What is your background? I am Irvin Davor, enforcer and retainer of the great House Hlalu. Oh, a fellow member of House Hlalu. That's good. I think. <laughs> well, you know, we have never spoken with anybody about being an enforcer. So, tell me about your trade. I am an enforcer. There are rules. The boss makes the rules. I enforce them. You break the rules, and you don't get to live a long, productive life. So don't break the rules. The rules, huh? You want to tell me about the rules? Rule number one. The boss says you do business with him, or you don't do business. You don't know who the boss is? Then you don't do business. Simple. Rule number two. You do business, but it is not with the boss because you have broken rule number one. So rule number two is that now I visit you, and after this visit, you never do anything ever again, except feed the worms. And rule number three is don't push your luck with me, or I kill you. Nothing personal, just part of my job. Oh, that's very nice. Thank you. Okay. Uh, tell me about business. If you want to talk business, speak with Crassius Curio or Adrino Arethi. All right. Uh, what do you know about Crassius Curio? Counselor Crassius Curio has a splendid mansion in the plaza atop the Hlalu Canton here in Vivek. Okay. Well, we did already know that. What about Adrino Arethi? Her home is in the Hlalu Canton Waste Works. Okay. Well, I guess we won't be doing any business right now because I don't currently plan to visit the Hlalu compound. We will, just not right now. Uh, let's see. You know, I'm going to ask about Vivek because I want this topic, Foreign Quarter. Tell me about the Foreign Quarter. The Foreign Quarter is the large three-tiered canton to the north. Originally, 
Foreigners were not allowed to enter Vivek any further than the foreign quarter, but now outlanders can travel throughout Vivek at will. The Imperial Guilds each have guild halls and complete services here, and an Imperial Cult Shrine serves the spiritual needs of the Imperial Faithful. Various independent tradesmen, craftsmen, and trainers also rent space here. The Black Shulk Corner Club rents beds to non-guild visitors. Okay. Thank you for that information. I'm just looking through the options here. I think it's time to ask him the four. Uh, that is new. I hear the same thing from everybody. Everybody's feeling tired. I wonder if something is going around. Uh, yeah, I mean, there's blight disease, right? Well, anyway, we've heard that. And uh, we've heard that as well. And we've heard that as well. Okay, that is all. Uh, I'm a little concerned Probably. about tensions in here. There is someone watching me. I can tell. Yes, I am staring intently at all of you because uh, you're all burning holes through <laughs> that Argonian there. I think that's Julia. We should talk to him. What is it? What do you want? I welcome you as the friend of my friend, Fedarmak. But I wish to go to my friend's bookstore, and these troublesome fools are in my way. I have tried to persuade them, but they hate my race, and I fear there will be violence. Perhaps if you speak with them, but be careful and be ready. Okay, uh, tell me about your friend's bookstore. My friend, Jobasha the Khajiit, has a bookstore, Jobasha's Rare Books. If you will agree to travel together with me there, I will answer your questions. But before we go, I beg you to try to persuade these troublesome fools to leave us alone. Otherwise, I fear they will attack us the moment we go to leave. Your journal has been updated. Hmm. All right, well, tell me about Jobasha. Jobasha is a friend of mine, a Khajiit. He owns Jobasha's rare books, which has a wide selection of rare and obscure books. He has very passionate moral and political views, which he shares freely. As a result, he and his bookshop arouse strong feelings in some quarters. Yeah, like the foreign quarter, perhaps? <laughs> I'll see myself out. Tell me about Jobasha's rare books. Jobasha's Rare Books is a bookshop with a wide selection of rare and obscure books. My friend Jobasha, a Khajiit, is the owner. The shop is here in Vivek's Foreign Quarter, in the Lower Waste Works, on the same level as the Black Shock Corner Club, but down at the end of the West Corridor. Oh, that's actually really nearby. That's a straight shot past the atrium in the center of the canton. And you're there. Well... Uh, let's hear about these troublesome fools. What's going on? The sight of a free Argonian offends these racist thugs. It would tarnish my Morag tongue honor to slay them, and I don't want to trouble my friend Seralis Golmis by fighting in his club. But I must go to my friend's bookstore, where we can talk in peace. If you have a way with words, perhaps you can talk to them. Or if you have a way with money, they might be bought. Otherwise, I fear there must be bloodshed. Your journal has been updated. Okay. Okay, I, I, I get the message here. Um, You know, I'm curious. Tell me about the Morag Tong. I am only a low-ranking member, but pauper and commoner do not suffer from war here as they do in the West, thanks to the honored traditions of house war and the Morag Tong. I am an Argonian, yet they treat me with respect. If you are curious, find a copy of The Black Glove. But please, do not mistake us for the Dark Brotherhood. The Dark Brotherhood is a perversion of ancient Dunmer traditions. They have sold their honor for profit, 
and are no more than a league of murderers for hire. Ah, uh, yeah, I wouldn't worry about that, Julia. Fetter's already had some run-ins with the Dark Brotherhood, and let's just say they're not on the best of terms right now. Though Fetter is wearing their uniform. How about we don't address that and start looking through these topics? There aren't too many. Hey, I'd like to join the Morag Tong. How about that? Perhaps... But I do not believe you are ready. Well, you're only a low-ranking member, so that decision is a bit above your pay grade, isn't it? What are the rules? Everybody's got rules for Fetter today. The Morag Tong executes writs and performs special duties as the ruling houses direct. Guild members never harm or steal from anyone, except the target of a legal writ of execution. Never betray our secrets or our identities. If you break any of these rules, you must immediately speak with a master to regain your good standing, or you may be targeted for execution. Your journal has been updated. You know, with the other guilds, they all say, These are our rules. Don't break them. If you do, talk to us, and we'll try to get the train back on the tracks. Not the Morag Tong. Man, you break the rules, we gonna track you down and kill you. Well, that's hardcore. Uh, let's see. Uh, well, you're Hulia, right? I think we've established that, but, uh, right? I am in the service of the Morag Tong, a modest thrall in rank, and by vocation and training, an agent and executioner. In my private life, I am a student of history. There is little else to tell. All right, what about your background? You may call me Hulia. What I do is my own affair. You have already told us what you do, Julia. But okay. And apparently we can tell him about disturbing dreams. I'm sorry. I don't know why you'd tell me this. In the old country, they set great store by dreams and omens. But I am an educated creature. Dreams mean nothing. They are just fancies. Imagination. Maybe Julia's right. We don't know. Do you know anything about Solstheim? No. No, you do not. What kind of training do you offer? We're doing all this while he's being stared down by a bunch of jerks. Uh, athletics, sneak, and acrobatics. Okay. And uh, if we wanted to trade... You've got Journeyman's Lockpicks and Journeyman's Probes. All right. Cool. Well, let's check the journal. 21st of Frostfall, Day 68. I found Hulia, but we can't talk at the Black Shulk Corner Club because some troublesome fools are bothering him. He says he'll answer my questions if I'll travel together with him to Jobasha's rare books. 21st of Frostfall, Day 68. Racist thugs are bothering Hulia. He wants to avoid trouble. Perhaps I can persuade them with words or coin to leave Hulia alone. Otherwise, Hulia thinks that there must be bloodshed. 21st of Frostfall, Day 68. These are the rules of the Morag Tong. Guild members never harm or steal from anyone, except the target of a legal writ of execution. Guild members never betray our secrets or our identities. If I break any of these rules, I must immediately speak with a master to regain my good standing, or I may be targeted for execution. No big deal. No big deal. Okay. Well, uh, we don't want this to come to blows, so let's see just how good Fetter's Gift of Gab Probably is. Nothing. Really? Nothing. Oh gosh, <laughs> very low confidence here now. Uh, well, anyway, hey, you want to please join me? If you don't get lost, I'm going to hit you and that filthy lizard so hard that when you finally hit the ground, your clothes will be out of style. Oh, wow, that's harsh. 
Can I talk to you about this a little? Okay, okay. He's just a filthy lizard. He can't help it. I'll leave him alone. Your journal has been updated. Got anything else to say about it? I don't care. They leave me alone. I leave them alone. Well, that was not so bad. I guess, uh, Fetter's got that award-winning smile. The disposition is 91 now, but it was 71 when Fetter achieved that. Cool. Let's check the journal. 21st of Frostfall, Day 68. I spoke with the troublesome fools bothering Hulia, and they agreed to leave him alone. Well, I take it then that there won't be any trouble because it said they. So I don't think I have to talk to everybody. <laughs> yeah. All right. So let's get out of here before we get plague. Are we ready to travel together to Jobasha's rare books? When we arrive at my friend's bookstore, I will answer your questions there. Yeah, let's travel together. Will you travel together with me to Jobasha's rare books? We leave the door to the Foreign Quarter Waste Works, turn right, west, continue down the hall and across the atrium on the same level, then follow the opposite corridor west on the other side of the atrium all the way to Jobasha's door. I must warn you, unless these troublesome fools are persuaded to behave like civilized beings, there may be fighting and killing if we try to travel together. Uh, we took care of it. So, yes, please follow me to Jobasha's rare books. Thank you, Fedarmak. I will follow you to Jobasha's rare books, and we will speak further there. Your journal has been updated. Goodbye. Let's check the journal. 21st of Frostfall, Day 68. Julia will follow me to Jobasha's rare books. There, he will answer my questions. All right, Julia. Let's blow this popsicle stand. Beg your pardon. Peace. Okay, so he said that it is... Well, over there. Just across the way. Through the atrium. Excuse us. Escort quest coming through. Welcome, citizen. How may I be of assistance? Uh, you can kind of stay out of my way. I'll chat with you later. This is an apothecary. This is an alchemist, so this must be Jobasha's rare books. Good. Your journal has been updated. Yes, thank you very much. We should be free from distraction here. Now, I said I'd tell you about the Nervarine cult so you can report back to Caius. And I don't know of any sixth house cult, but I can tell you what I do know. Thank you. Yeah, the font color for thank you is a bit brighter than the rest. I think that's meant to be a stand-in for your journal has been updated. Right, well, before we explore these important new topics, I'd like to see his responses to older ones, just to get those out of the way. So tell me about Argonians. We are counted among the first peoples. Our homeland is Argonia or Black Marsh in Imperial speech. I am a poor example. My parents were bound in slavery, and I have lived in Morrowind all my life. Like other Argonians who have accepted Imperial ways, I am much like any other Imperial citizen. But to be honest, we have always been a private, even secretive people, and I am not comfortable speaking in this manner. You might do better to look in books, if you are curious. Okay. Tell me about slavery. I am an imperial citizen, and I believe slavery should be outlawed as it is elsewhere in Tamriel. Many of Tamriel's people once practiced slavery, but have now rejected it as cruel and immoral. I hope that in my lifetime, slavery might be outlawed in Morrowind, 
but the armistice confirmed slavery as lawful, and the great houses strongly resist any diminishment of the rights guaranteed by that ancient agreement between the Empire and the Dunmer. Yeah, that's a bum deal with which Fetter does not agree, so he might be engaging in some civil disobedience. Uh, anything new to say about your background? No, that remains unchanged. Tell me about your friend's bookstore again. My friend, Jobasha the Khajiit, has a bookstore, Jobasha's Rare Books. He has a remarkable selection of books, the best on Vardenfell, I'm sure. And he is well-educated and well-spoken, knowledgeable in local affairs. That's good. What about you? Has anything changed with you? No. Now, I realize we are going over a bunch of topics with him that we've already covered, but that was when his disposition with Fetter was 67, not 97. He might be a bit more forthcoming with certain information now. That, and we certainly earned some goodwill by getting him out of that situation with all those troublesome fools. Anything new to say about Jabasha? No. What about Jobasha's Rare Books? Jobasha's Rare Books is a bookshop with a wide selection of rare and obscure books. My friend Jobasha, a Khajiit, is the owner. All right. Hey, I did you a favor. Now can I join the Morag Tong? No. No, I cannot. Let's see. Well, what do you think about those troublesome fools now? Their hatred saddens and angers me. I hate the custom of despising another on account of his race, and I cannot forgive the narrowness of mind and poverty of spirit that assures them of their right to abuse and attack me for spite or on a whim. Yeah, I'm with you there. You want to travel together again? Perhaps someday, yes. For example, I would greatly wish to see the Ashlands and their peoples with my own eyes. But at present... My duties to the Morag Tong do not permit me to travel. Yeah, wouldn't want to uh, go AWOL on the Morag Tong and then have them track you down and kill you. Because I guess that's what they do. Lovely. All right. Uh, let's see. Yeah, all right. I think that's all I wanted to go over. We can now ask about important storyline stuff, like the Nerevarine cult. To understand the Nervarin cult, you must understand the history of the Ashlanders. Nervar means something very different to the Ashlanders from what he means to Dunmer of the Great Houses. You should also know about the persecution of the Nervarin and the legacy of the False Incarnate, for the Nervarin cult is at the heart of the ancient conflict between the nomadic Ashlanders and the settled Great House Dunmer. Here is a summary for Caius, but ask your questions and I'll answer in detail. Notes from Hulia has been added to your inventory. Your journal has been updated. Oh, looks like Fetter is about to do some big learning. Tell me about the history of the Ashlanders. In the first era, the nomadic Ashlanders and the settled Dunmer clans were much alike, but after the First Council and the formation of the Great Houses, Ashlanders have been steadily forced into the poorest and most hostile lands. Now the nomadic tribes look to the prophesied return of Nerevar for a restoration of their ancient rites and religious traditions. Ugh, that is not cool what happened to them. Uh, tell me more about them. The Ashlanders hate the House Dunmer, who have become soft, and who have abandoned traditional ancestor worship for the gods of the tribunal. And the Ashlanders hate Outlanders, who invaded and stole their land, and forced them to live as a subject people. A reborn Nervar who could drive out the Outlander invaders, destroy the false worship of the tribunal, and restore the pure traditional life and faith of the nomads would be a very popular hero to the Ashlanders. Wink wink nudge nudge, got it. Tell me about the great houses. In modern times, Morrowind is ruled by five great houses. House Hlalu, House Redoran, House Telvani, 
House Indoril, and House Drez. Great House's culture is partly defined by its roots in ancient Dunmer tribal clans and partly by later imperial influences from other Western cultures. The Great House's culture is only one of the native Dunmer cultures of Morrowind. The other native culture, the Ashlander culture, is a nomadic barbarian culture largely untouched by imperial influences. Alright, thanks for your take on that. And now I think we should ask about the persecution of the Nerevarine. The temple treats the Nerevarine prophecies as heresy, and the temple imprisons and executes heretics, unless prevented by imperial law. But since the Nerevarine cult is hostile to the Empire, the Empire does not interfere when the temple persecutes the cult. Ashlanders hate the temple, and particularly the Ordinators, for their ruthless treatment of Nerevarine cultists. Well, that's one way to silence dissent, I guess. Just kill them all. Tell me about the Nerevarine. When the Ashlanders joined Nerevar in the Battle of Red Mountain, he swore on his great ring, one clan under moon and star, to honor the ways of the spirits and rights of the land. But after the victory, Ashlanders say the power-hungry tribunal slew Nerevar in secret. Then, setting themselves up as gods, the tribunal and the great houses forgot Nerevar's promises to the tribes. Ashlanders say Nerevar will come again with his ring, cast down the false gods, and make good his promises to the tribes. I think I can understand why they wouldn't want people talking about that. Tell me about the false incarnate. In the past, some have claimed to be the reincarnated Nerevar. The most recent is known as Peakstar, a figure of legend among the Wastes tribes for the last 30 years. The temple says these false incarnates disprove the prophecies, since the false incarnates fail and come to nothing. But the mystical Nerevarine cult glorifies rather than shrinks from contradictions, citing the appearance of failed incarnates as certain proof of Nerevar's coming rebirth. Admittedly, that is a little odd, but uh, I admire the persistence. If at first you don't reincarnate, try, try again. Yeah, anyway, uh, Julia said he doesn't know anything about the Sixth House Cult, but it doesn't hurt to ask. I've never heard of such a thing. House Dagoth was the Sixth House, but in the War of the First Council, they betrayed the other Great Houses and were destroyed for their treason. But I've never heard of anyone worshipping them. Dagoth Ur, the ancient head of House Dagoth, is the devil of the Tribunal Faith but I've never heard of anyone worshipping him either. Well, that is still helpful information, though. Thank you. And now I'm just checking to see if there's anything else. Yeah, no, I think that's everything that we need to talk to Julia about. So let's end the conversation and check the journal. 21st of Frostfall, Day 68. Julia has followed me to Jobasha's rare books. He says he'll answer my questions here, where we can talk in peace. 21st of Frostfall, Day 68 Julia hadn't heard of a Sixth House cult, but he knew a lot about the Nerevarine cult. He gave me notes to give to Caius. The main thing I gathered is that the temple's conflict with the Nerevarine cult is tied up with ancient grievances between the Ashlanders and the Great Houses. Indeed, and he did give us some notes. There they are. We'll hold on to these and read them once we get back to Caius. We'll do a little review, because Fetter still has to speak with two more informants here in Vivek and explore Vivek in the process, so it's going to be a minute. We'll take a look around here in Jobasha's rare books in the next video. So thanks for watching. Blessed we are. Blessed we are indeed. <laughs> I'll see you then.